energy uh, crisis is concerned when he got to China. Um, let's let's find out what really uh, this means. Is this uh, an issue of desperation to alleviate this problem? It's not about desperation, uh, Zach. I think it's important for me to mention, even for those students of uh, crisis management, disaster management, listening to this particular program, they do well know that when you want to identify a solution to the problem, there are three thematic areas that you need to use. Number one, preventive measures. Secondly, intervention measures. Thirdly, mitigation measures. When you are dealing with uh, preventive measures, you deal with a matter that has not yet taken place. You, you prevent it from taking place. When you're dealing with intervention measures, you are dealing with a matter or an issue that is in the process. The process is already going on. Then you bring in intervention measures to ameliorate the situation. When you're dealing with mitigation measures, you are basically responding to a thing that has already taken place. So what are we talking about? When you look at the trip to China, alongside FOCAC, which is a very important summit that is held, centering on China-Africa relations, on a number of thematic areas which improve trade and investment. The president took time, instead of just going there like any other, to look back you know, and take advantage of his trip to engage on various fronts, understanding that China and Zambia have long-standing relations in the area of trade and investment. And it is gratifying to note, Zach, that out of that trip, we have had a number of presidents in the region that went there who are also experiencing cases such as road shedding. But they never succeeded in getting what we managed to get, and yet they attended the same function. So what are those things that we have achieved in that trip or from that trip? Number one, the president has managed to secure an investment that will involve procuring, installation, and supply of electricity arising from the installations of the solar plants at Kariba North Bank, which will produce 100 megawatts. For my mother who is at the market, who is in, listening to this particular program, maybe on the copper belt, listening to this particular program between Mpala, Nkana, Osakile, Kabushi there, what does this 100 megawatts translate into? To avoid getting into such details, I can only give an example of Luapula. Luapula uses about 15 megawatts. So that gives us a picture of what we're talking about when we talk about 100 megawatts. So that is not the only thing. Again, the president, through ZESCO, succeeded to, to secure another investment at our power, our power plant in Kafue, lower hydropower station, near there, to set up another 100 megawatts plant. In addition to that, that is what we may refer to as a long-term plan, which will help us now and in the future, should we be confronted with a similar situation. But there are short-term measures that have been undertaken, such as what was announced by the, the Minister of Information and Media recently with regard to importation of a certain number of watts, megawatts from Namibia and also from, um, from Mozambique as a way of trying to cushion the situation. That time we had a deficit of about 600 to 700 megawatts. But over time, we were also warned that the deficit will increase as we draw closer to the, to the rain season because then the water level is going down. So as we speak, we are now close to 1,000, 1,000 megawatts. You may wish to know, Zach, that this country needs 1,700 megawatts in order to power the country at peak hour. Unlike our neighbor, Botswana, which simply needs the whole country, 500 megawatts, Zambia needs 1,700 megawatts, and the deficit is moving towards 1,000 megawatts. The investment we are talking about is going into providing alternative source of energy as the campaign promise, which from the type of view, from the point of view of investment, may have come quite late. But again, fundamental decisions have been made locally to trigger the investment in the alternative sector. 
One of them is to remove rigidities that stopped private sector players to go flat, flat out to participate in the generation of power, even be able to supply to other households. So government through the cabinet approved that as ZAC, you can now go ahead. If you have solar plants, you produce, you can connect the national grid and sell to Zesco. You, can, you are also allowed to connect certain households, which you never used to be allowed, and sell them and make, earn a living. So as a result of those policy formulations that have been undertaken, there has been a positive response from the private sector leading to the investment of a 300 megawatt thermal power at Mamba, Mamba Korea, whose beginning has been commissioned by the president, 300 megawatts. And 60 megawatts from the Copper Belt Energy, whose investment has already been commissioned by the head of state. And they envisaged 105 megawatts from Dollar Power Plant, plus the 150 megawatts from Western Province, which is yet to be commissioned. Now, the question that an ordinary citizen will have is, with all those things that you've talk talked about, yeah. we are not seeing any change. So what is the point of you talking about those things? Fine. You also need to understand that. In addition, in addition to that, mm -hmm. uh, the question would be, this is not the first time we are hearing uh, going to strike deals uh, in the energy sector. I think the first was uh, in Saudi Arabia where we had, uh, you know, one terabyte of uh, 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 energy generation would be invested uh, by a Saudi uh, company. Okay. To that, to yeah. date, people don't seem to see anything. And so it leaves them to doubt whether these and any future uh, investments that are, uh, or MOUs that are being signed uh, that eventually, you know, become investments into this country uh, are doubtful. Whether the, uh, people are doubtful whether we can believe them because we haven't seen so far what we were told will be coming as investments. Now, we are talking about MOUs that have been signed. Right. So I want now to, ve to refer to MOUs that have been signed, okay? Yeah. Which are actualized or being actualized. The one zero five dollar power plant MOU has taken shape. The Zesco Nalolo solar plant has taken shape. That's what I was referring to. The Zesco CEC, remember CEC would produce and export, has already been commissioned and connected to the national grid. The MOU between the government and Mamba Koreas, among the people that are running, that are foreigners, it has been accepted. Initially it was rejected because Zesco was highly indebted. We were owing Mamba Koreas 500, mil 500 million US dollars. I'm sure you heard. The first time in 2022, we were hit by some road shedding. We had to now start dismantling that. In Mozambique, your president had an interface. It has succeeded, I'm just telling you, over the imported power with his counterpart. Namibia, the MOU there to import has materialized. What other MOUs have materialized? In the South, Saudi Arabia, the MOU with an investor in Mopani, the investor arrived, which the opposition started fighting. As you may be aware that we will sign these MOUs and they are saying nothing comes out of the MOU. When it succeeds, our colleagues will start attacking the, will start attacking the investors. So the MOU in, 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 in Mopani has, 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 has come to fruition and as we speak, over 1.3 billion was invested and we are seeing the benefits from the tax point of view and also jobs that have been claimed back. More MOU. In, in Saudi Arabia, which include export of avocado, among others, you go to Emirates there, you find citizens have started exporting. Okay? Those that have avocado, they are exporting goods there. The MOU between Zambia and China, which emerged from the communique between President Xi Jinping and HH when he first went to China last year, you are aware, my brother, that among the issues that were in the MOU is the Tazara Zambia Railways repairs. That's what the president negotiated. China has now accepted to commence and we have signed. Uh, that's what you saw. When you saw President Samir, okay, from Tanzania, also witnessing the signing, China has accepted to rehabilitate the white elephant in the name of Tazara Zambia. It has materialized, my brother. In case you didn't know, we signed and the president went and signed another MOU in, in, in USA, which involved the fertilizer manufacturing plant. Many houses were called to cover. It has been done. It's not history. Again, more MOUs have been signed to relax visa conditions. The records online, for those of you that are listening to this program, suggest the number of tourists has gone up as a result of relaxing visa conditions. So MOUs are working. 
and China has accepted. What other MOUs have we signed? We've signed an MOU with China, which country will owe more than $6 billion to accept through a bilateral agreement to, re to, 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 uh, to restructure the debt. China, as a single entity, it has succeeded, my brother. So we are not talking about MOUs that are basically window dressing. We're talking about things that are practical. So let's respond yeah. to the question. So let me, let despite, me now deal. Despite, yeah. despite mm -hmm. all these that you've mentioned mm -hmm. in terms of intervention mm -hmm. in this, uh, amid this the, the, the energy crisis, uh, you've mentioned all that. And the bigger question is, how come we are not seeing that? Difference? Yes, now this is where I'm coming. Yeah. So because these are not interventions. They are mitigation measures. Remember in my beginning, yeah. I did mention that mitigation measures come after something has taken place. You cannot intervene in a drought because it's a natural disaster. You can't stop it. Now I'm trying to now get back to the three thematic areas. Yeah. That there are interventions, there are preventive measures, and there are mitigation measures. Preventive measures, you cannot prevent a drought. Over time, you can only do what was agreed at the Rio Convention in regard to climate change. But by, by, by engaging in, in afforestation. But you're not but going by what you, what you can do is you can foresee, you can be forewarned, and you can prevent hunger. Mm -hmm. This government should have prevented the hunger situation because it was aware of the weather patterns ahead of, 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 of uh, uh, time. And also, uh, the government did not take measures to prevent the hunger situation. So you can prevent something from happening, no, let me, let me, which let me, probably this government, another topic yeah. for another discussion. No, no, but let's I'll, I'll deal with it. Yes, yes you've raised right. it. Yeah. yeah. So, so in as far as prevention, mm -hmm. you can still prevent eventualities, even if they are natural in nature. That's now, my there, there are things that you can prevent based yeah. on your capacity. That is why you find even countries that are developed, like like Germany, they could not prevent a natural disaster. You, you, no, are, you, you are a I'm research coming. consultant. I'm you are a research consultant. And, and here is where I'm taking you to. Mm -hmm. You, uh, as a research consultant, you should have actually uh, researched how often we experience this drought now, now, you know, over it, years. It, it, and it, I think now it's it, a pattern. Now, here's the response. You are aware that government announced in good time, first of all, warning the farmers that we, ex we are expecting serious dry spells in different areas, and the most heat will be southern, central, and eastern. To deal with the situation, Farmers were called upon to plant any for the very first rainfall. Those that did that got something. Those that followed the normal farming season ended up in a crisis. Away from that, here is what government has done, because that's what people are looking out for. Government has earmarked 17,000 farmers as a response to the drought. Immediately, the drought was detected. There was a question on the floor of parliament. What is government doing ahead of this drought, ahead of the looming hunger? Government responded in affirmative and said, we have earmarked 17,000 farmers whom are going to help with irrigation equipment. As we are speaking, some of the base that we are getting from ZNS and others is coming from winter maize. The harvesting of winter maize by ZNS started in February. How did government else foresee this problem? Government foresaw it in 2022, before it came. So as a response to foreseeing it in responding to your question, mm -hmm. government decided to set aside one million to conduct auditing of farm blocks across the country, and it was announced by the Minister of Finance. When they conducted auditing, we revamped all farm blocks across the country under the irrigation system. And the government also announced that ZNS will then go to the next phase of purchasing center pivots. Some journalists were asking me, Ah, Mark, I'm writing a story. What is the center pivot? I said, no, this is the equipment that is used as for overhead irrigation. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 5FM covered the issue of irrigation equipment. That is the response government made. But again, because the damage, because what weather patterns do, they will, they will predict what is coming. The extent may not be predicted. Okay? Because in every research, there is a room for, for error. Not that the whole of it is a, is a flop, but there is room for error. That is what we look at in the research. And this is how we identify a research gap, which triggers a research, which we refer to as in a research document as a statement of the problem. Okay? So now, it is because other research works that have been conducted, which will constitute the literature review, will have left a gap, which will now 
the raised questions that must be answered from your research. And that now becomes the basis for your research. Why did they leave them out? That is the name of scientific research, a research gap. So now, with that margin of error, they, they are warned, we are warned, government starts preparing. And I mentioned on one of the programs that it is as though HH knew, but of course it did because it was informed. So I said, let us deal with it this way. Because this drought and climate change issue will not just end now. It may continue like that. In other countries, the rainfall pattern has changed. In Tanzania, Kenya, it has wreaked havoc. I'm sure you are aware. There are floods instead of receiving rains. People have died there. In Nigeria, it has wreaked havoc. In Bangladesh, it has wreaked havoc. In other countries, climate change has brought heat waves. People have died. Then what do we do in Zambia? We can work with the resources that we have to plan ahead by ensuring that we put in these measures that should obviously respond to the challenge moving forward as a country. So, the starting point is that 17,000 farmers who are receiving irrigation equipment under CEC, CEEC, and also under Ministry of Agriculture, among other programs, has obviously shown a very good positive response. But again, you can only have this much as a country. That is why it was declared a national disaster. Once by international law, a matter is declared a, a, a national disaster, it means now it is beyond you. You are basically talking about more than six million. That's the, the, the principle on international law. Once a country declares something as a, a, a disaster, they are saying this is beyond us. How is it beyond us, Zach? You are talking about the government to feed over six million people. Do you know what we are talking about? For free. Now, look. Botswana has a population of 2.4 million. Namibia has a population of 2.4 million. In other words, you are saying, you are telling your government of a poor country that they must feed the entire Namibia and feed the entire Botswana and add another Botswana for free. That is what has triggered a national disaster. Your government must feed more than 6 million people. So why was, now, so why was, so why was May's stock sold? I'm getting there. In anticipation I'm that we are going there. to have a I'm situation that we are in. I'm getting there. I'm is getting this there. an issue of you mismanaged yeah. the, uh, the planning? Let, I'm getting there. Yeah. In the first place, the question was, was the issue of the export of meth to DRC mostly has been misrepresented, partly because of lack of information. It has also been now, explained to the now, public I'm coming, by this government. Now, I'm coming because I've explained it before on this platform. Firstly, you need to understand that the maize stock that has mostly been referred to by our colleagues, where they have been talking about millions and so on, yeah. the export started at their time, and the records are there. Those listening go online, you find the maize gets coming on in Malawi. When there was a maize ban export in Zambia by Ed Galungu, it started then. Then the then government spokesperson said, these are old contracts. What I've said, go and enter on Google and say, maize gets scandal in Malawi. When you scroll down, you will see the re response from the previous government. So the only deal that was signed between DRC out of bilateral relations and Zambia, that moving forward, we shall be, we shall be planting maize and exporting to DRC. Because then there was a lot of smuggling. Huh? Government realized that when the FRA released the maize to the millers, most of the trucks were impounded at the border. A cry also came from the players that let us put in place a system instead of stopping us from doing business. Huh? Can we be allowed to export on condition that we pay the taxes? And in addition, that it is an MOU you are going to sign. Now, note that. In Zambia, when you talk about maize, there is the FRA and the private sector. The private sector exported to Tanzania, exported to Kenya, exported to these other countries. Then government realizing that that maize which the UPND found was collected from the farmers who were not paid. I want you to understand very well. The maize was collected from the farmers who were not paid for about two years. 258,000 farmers, again, go on Google and say protest by unpaid farmers Zambia, you will find the story before UPND took over. They were camping. For about two years, some of them were not paid. In other words, in the first place, that is not your mess. The way of FRA is established, 
Let's start away is established by an act of parliament. Its primary job is to one, to reserve part of the mess, to reserve food reserve, is to use for future use. Enough to bridge seasons. That's how it has been working. Enough to bridge seasons. For a very long time until we have a drought, so that government now can start using the same maize to give those that are affected. All this time, do you know where maize has been coming from? It has been coming from FRI. FRI has never told you that we have run out of maize. Last year, when people said, no, they've, so, they've exported the maize. FRI continued giving maize to the millers and they released first 150,000 metric tons and they released another 250,000 metric tons. This country on a monthly basis use, uses about 120,000 metric tons on a monthly basis. Now, the problem came because when you're releasing that much, because FRI's job is not to start feeding millers in the first place, cheaply. FRI's job is to help citizens because millers are private entities. Do you get the point? They are private entities, and then you cannot bail out a private subsidiary using government funds. It's some, some offense, because people mix up the two. So, Mina's created a cartel through an association. I know they are listening. They've been engaged many times. I'm sure you know that for a very long time they've been negotiating with government. They created a cartel, where they agreed that if government gives us maize lower than the market price, we shall reduce the price of maize, and there will be availability of millimil in the country. We shall reduce the price of minimum per se. Government, my brother, released 150,000 metric tons to them and told them to register with FRA and supply to them. What did we see? A lot of maize leaving this minimum leaving the country. And our own citizens who are crying foul today were participating in Chirirabombo. Media houses were flown there by the Ministry of Defense. I was also there in Chirirabombo. Our own citizens using bicycles, it's all over online. The, and, and the millers, some of them renowned companies, I don't want to mention them now, their trucks were impounded on the copper belt. Some of them even called me, Mr. Mark, is there a way that you could intervene? What is the problem, sir? Then they said, no, our trucks have been impounded. Where were you going at? I was going to Chitrabombo. Then he said, oh, not Chitrabombo, but Rwansha. We were five kilometers away from Rwansha. So I said, how possible? I come from the copper belt. Chitrabombo is very far away from Rwansha. And a normal police officer cannot impound a truck that is headed for Rwanda. Let me find out. I called the minister, Copper Belt. Ah, minister, people are saying they are not seeing medium on the market. What is going on? And then secondly, I've been told you are impounding trucks that are coming to quench the situation. The minister said, Mark, those guys who are talking to you, and I know them, he mentioned the name of the, of the mining company, which is very big in Zambia. He said, we have impounded their trucks at the border they are exporting. But this is the maze we agreed initially. That once they are given by FRA cheaply, the market price was over 6,500 per ton. 6,500 kwacha per ton. But government had to release it at 4,000. All the millers misbehaved and refused to reduce and said, it's not us, it's the black market. The church is a businessman. He said, okay, guys, I think we cannot be doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. How about Aniston defined madness as doing the same thing but expecting different results over and over? Now, let us send out our strategy. Let us use ZNS. And then we are going to give a market reflective price. So that one to work with us as millers in the private sector who partner with ZNS. And that's what is going on now. But it's a process for us to meet the demand. So as we are speaking, Moshe Milling, as an MOU, they are crashing on behalf of ZNS. You have good test milling, they are crashing on, on behalf of ZNS. You have central milling, they are crashing on behalf of ZNS. Chimsoro, they are crashing on, among many others, and they are enjoying the same profit that they were enjoying. In other words, there has been a lot of manipulation by the market players. Not that it is wrong, but because of the type of market policy we have. It's a mixed economy. Apart, apart from that, the market has been liberalized. If Zach wants to sell a T-shirt, you can even tell me, if you saw which without anybody stopping you, you can tell me that yellow T-shirt you're wearing is going at 10,000 watts. Because it's a free market. And now, millers are doing the same thing. Now, life has become very hard for some of them because they have a short supply of maize. When the farming season is done and we are harvesting, most of the millers rush to collecting and buying maize from the farmers. Government warns against selling to market this briefcase businessman. Are you aware that there is one 
private company that had almost more than more more maize than FRI. And then their market is export. They are not interested in this country. In fact, today, if you told the millers that, can you go ahead and export it? It will be very excited. Because that has been their cry. They are saying, allow us to export so that we make more money. Because for them in Zambia, there is no market. They are saying in Zambia, it's cheap. We are getting very little. Even when Zesco, government came in with Zesco to relax certain uh, tariffs for them, they have most, some of them have not been sincere. They still keep the, the high price and claim it is the private sector. Government sat down with them again to, to start engaging that, okay, can we remove middlemen? You'll be supplying direct to, to chain store markets. It is the same. Then government realized we must be participants. In any case, in many countries in the world, the most sensitive food is managed by the state. We are going to come in. Then the opposition cried, yeah, hey, you're going to kill the private sector because for them it was, it was enjoyable to see the, the, the price of milk skyrocket. Now, to cut the long story short so that I get back to the issues, those are some of the interventions that have been made and also mitigation measures. As the situation stands now, as you know that we have got our own equipments to detect the weather, we will announce we may, not, we may not get it right on the extent of the damage. And this is why the situation is generated such that we have to declare it as a national disaster. That is why international institutions and other countries have responded. We have seen Mozambique also responding. We have seen Ukraine also responding. You have seen the IMF World Bank responding. So that is the situation in which we are. And unfortunately, I want to emphasize, there are preventive measures, there are also intervention measures. Intervention measures and preventive measures cannot be dealt with when you are dealing with the drought. You can only provide mitigation measures. Preparatory measures can be made, and this is what government has done. They are not necessarily interventions. They are prepare, preparatory measures to prepare for the droughts. How did government prepare? Government prepared by indicating that if the West goes, comes to the West, the law allows us to alter the budget. Do you get the point? So can we put this as a preparatory measure? If the situation gets bad, we need to real reallocate money and ensure that we deal with the situation. The Minister of Finance had the information on his table. The moment we realized that the situation degenerated, what he had to do was to go back to Parliament to seek a mandate because government cannot spend anything without parliamentary approval. When he got there, the opposition and everybody unanimously supported the idea of looking for extra food and extra budget. All of them. And the opposition MPs must be commended for the job they did. Because one of the questions they asked is that, we, government has announced that there will be drought. What preparatory measures have you taken? One of the responses was that, one, we have an option of altering the budget because we have limited resources. Secondly, we have also an option of asking for international support. Because financially, as a country, we are constrained. As many of you, our friends, are aware, we are a huge debt. So far, in 2022, government last year announced that we, early this year announced that we have so far paid about tw over 23 billion kwacha towards debt. Remember, there is domestic debt and external debt. And there are bilateral debts and multilateral debts. Multilateral debt involves many countries. Bilateral debts involve one country or two countries. The domestic debt involves local debt. And one of them, as a case in point, is Mama Koreans. And as you are aware, Zesco is highly indebted such that if you ask them today to put up a solar plant, they want to manage. They owe China over three billion US dollars over that hydropower station, which they did not finish, money got finished. They owe Mozambique, they owe Mozambique about a million US dollars. They owe another country about a million US dollars where we wanted to import power to deal with the situation. They said, ah, oh, government of the Republic of Zambia, we have power we can give you as you are looking for solutions for this load shedding. So that you import. But first of all, has Zesco told you that they owe us? He said, what? The president went to Mozambique. Mozambique, your consumption is lower. May you help us with the surplus. Who we'll buy? Mozambique said, Mr. President, I appreciate your concern. You owe us over one million US dollars. I said, What? I think on God that yes. Then we went to China. Can you help us? At, ah, <laughs> HH, you owe us over three billion US dollars. This is your company. You know, you want us to. Now, because the president is blessed with the skill to negotiate, because that is his career, 
he managed to negotiate with China amid how much we owe them to accept to partner with Zesco and presenting this as a national disaster to come and produce 100 megawatts and as a mitigation measure also in short term to set up solar panels on households. Where else is it happening in Africa? In Botswana. Because part of, part of Botswana and Namibia are a desert. They don't use hydropower stations. So what they've done is, the utility company has put solar panels on households, but they are paying the way we pay Zisco. In other words, there is even a, a meter for use. What the difference is the installation. In other words, government acknowledges that all, not all citizens can afford a solar panel. Not all citizens can afford a lithium plant because those are expensive. Even after government has zero rated the importation of these things, they are still expensive considering the average income of a Zambian. So the president had a dual approach in negotiation that President Xi Jinping, my country is different from yours. Thank you for the investment. But now listen to me. In my country, not all citizens can afford these solar panels. I want another negotiation. HH, what are you talking about? I said, I want to see if I can help my people to by putting solar panels on their household. Now, HH, that is very expensive. How many households are we looking at? But now that's how why we have bilateral relations. Let us agree. Otherwise, my country is finished. The only way right now is for me to now begin attending to households. And remember President Xi Jinping, I am grappling with another crisis of feeding over 6 million people. What? Over 6 million people? Yes. And your government, I must commend it, they have helped us towards this drought by providing certain food amenities. Now, this is a crisis we are talking about, my brother. This is why it is always important for us to go straight and deal with the crisis. Now, I don't know how uh, this government intends to uh, rescue Zesco from its high indebtedness, but I know that Zesco has been trying to do, to, to innovate around how it can clear its debt. One of them is obviously proposing increased tariffs, which the Energy Regulation Board, uh, which I believe uh, government, in this case through the ERB, has denied Zesco an opportunity to rescue itself because obviously it's importing uh, a lot of power at a, at a higher rate uh, and selling it at a lower rate to, to, to the consumers here in the country. So how then do you, uh, I know you're not speaking for government, but mm -hmm. as, 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 a, as a research yes, consultant, yeah, was, really, yeah. mm -hmm. there has to be a day when Zesco must be freed from yes. this. Now, let me tell and you. it has to be by itself. Now listen, my brother. Through increased tariffs. The way you are seeing government running, the government is being run, informed by the policies that we put in, in place by sector. Okay? Yeah. What you saw is a summary in the manifesto. You will not see the, those things. We understood uh, the, 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 the debt burden of Zesco. So one of the things that government has done is to allow for partnerships and to remove all those rigidities because the demand for electricity as the population is growing has been going up. So what government did as, as, as the European government, they've decided to allow for private players to come so that they can deal with part of the demand. And this is why you are seeing so many mushrooms in companies now. But don't forget that the, the private sector may get into this sector. Uh, and, and I think they've been, they've been relaxed in as far as uh, uh, getting into this sector because the tariffs are not attractive. No. Well, what has it's, been happening? It's the tariffs no. issue yeah. here I'm, 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 that I'm has slowed the down investment. In yeah, I agree sector. with you. I agree yeah. with you, Zach. Yeah. I agree with you on that particular score. But the number of them are accepting to come only after an off-take agreement. What are we talking about for the people that are listening to you, to us? They, they, can, they are only willing to invest in generating power if Zesco accepts to buy from them. So Zesco now is looking at the money they have. They have also to look at where to supply. So Zesco, that's why government now announced that now we have allowed you as citizens, those of you who have capacity to produce using your solar plant and put into the national grid. Government has removed that rigidity policy to allow Zesco to do that. Now, coming to the tariff, I agree with you. Most of the international companies have been insistent about Zambia yeah. in Southern Africa. They are saying your tariffs are very bad. Now, that is not the language my mother at Soweto wants to hear. What my mother at Soweto wants to hear is that 
if the tariffs are low, you should not be worried, you must be happy as our leaders. If you take them up, you will kill us. And this is why government gunned down the proposal. I said, look, we have not reached a stage where our citizens can afford the tariffs you are proposing. We agree with you, we are struggling, but we will struggle together as government. I know you want to expand this school, but even partnerships work. And we've given them examples. They said, look at the partnership with Mamba Kodaris. Once there is discipline, Mamba Kodaris will give you power. 600 megawatts is huge, my brother. Meaning Mamba Kodaris alone can supply the entire Botswana. The president said, let us encourage them. We should not restrict them the way it used to be in how much power they can produce. Let us allow them to produce more. And Mamba Kodaris now is at 600. Next, we shall buy that power. The profit may be minimal, but we can play around with other things such as taxation, among other issues, many other structural obligations in the interim to save the situation until such a time that the situation normalizes. We are already hit by load shedding. It is not normal. Because what is happening at ZESCO right now? Let me tell you. What, when ZESCO is, is producing power at full capacity, about 50% of what they produce goes to salaries. You get the point? Then they are spending almost, you know, uh, 40% to, to debt servicing. Then now operations and transformers, which are expensive, have to run on the 10%. That's how the government also was running then, which made government announce that we are going to store all the projects. Even the hydropower station in Kafio was stored. They said government has no capacity. Then ZESCO also has no capacity. Now, with the high indebtedness, ZESCO can only partner with other private sector companies so that they recoup some profit. The private sector will come with their money and put up the infrastructure. ZESCO will only buy from them and put a market so that ZESCO can make profit. The other successful story is that of uh, Tata, Zambia. Tata from India. They have partnered with ZESCO and they, are, they, are, they have expanded. It is Daisy hydropower station. This is Sino, you know? Also Sino, uh, you know? Sino Energy from China with the Kafio hydropower station. In, in it is they are partner, they are producing power about 120 megawatts. But that particular dam as well is gone because those spill gates or the gates that where you put turbines are only made possible to 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 start running when there is a flow of water. So water has stopped flowing. Because it cannot reach the nose or the nose or the mouth through which water enters. It is raw. I was flying above Karibada just two, three weeks ago. I couldn't believe it. I saw what I've never seen before. I never knew there are islands in the, in the dam there. Right now you can see, if we were on TV, I was going to show you a picture. You can see islands in the, in the, in the Karibada, which has claimed many lives as one of the deepest man-made lakes we have. We are flying over it. Now it's looking like a river. And not a dam. Now, I understand the situation is bad. Citizens know the situation is bad. All they are looking for are government responses. And I've told you. How is government responding? Government responding with one solar. Except those details that have been given are not plug and play. And they are not immediately. I'm glad you yeah. are aware yeah. that, that citizens are aware that things are bad. But I think that citizens are thinking that uh, the government has not uh, really done its best to resolve some of the issues. Now, you as UPMD research consultant, I want to ask a very candid question. Um, do you think that UPND still has the confidence of the people, especially that we are headed into 2026 general elections. Do you think that UPND will be able to get the same votes that they got in 2021? Having obviously experienced it, also I'm aware that this has been a very difficult punch for any political party. It would have been a very difficult punch for any political party which assumed office in 2021. But the issue or the difference with the UPND, I'm not sure if you are aware, is that you have been so stubborn as a party in acknowledging 
that there are certain things that you promised as a party that you are far away from achieving, and you have no explanation as to why, and you are not uh, remorseful about that. And people feel the fact that you have not been remorseful about your promises, which have so far not been achieved, especially the cost of living. Mm. And because you are not remorseful about it and unapologetic about it, or explaining as to why things have not happened the way that you saw them before the election, people feel you don't deserve another term. Yeah, thank you. Let me start with uh, your own words such as stubborn in acknowledging, okay? Which I believe is far from facts. When the president was clinching a deal in China, the first thing that he acknowledged was that I'm aware that this load shedding has affected the thousands of SMEs and does not please him. So when you, when you go to words such as stubborn in acknowledging, I do not know what people to, as I say. Your president has acknowledged that, for example, minimum is expensive, but we shall get over it. Government has acknowledged from time to time the president has made it clear load shedding is bad. I felt it. But we shall get over it, and we will not start back. Now, when you say that uh, people believe that we don't deserve another chance, those that are reasonable will tell you that right now, if uh, if we had not changed the government, the situation would have been worse than the way it is. Are you worried that Zambians I'm, are quiet? I'm coming. Are you, are you aren't you worried that Zambians are let, too quiet let, amid this, this let, situation? Let, let, me, let me deal. Let me deal. Yeah. Let me deal with the first question yeah. exhaustively. Zambians know right now that if we had any other, the situation would have been worse. Because among the many issues that we have promised, citizens are aware that there are a lot of things we have achieved. And when you ask those that voted for UPND, they will tell you that, my brother, you know, I'm not even looking for change. I'm only looking for the last critical things that are remaining to be resolved. One, cost of living. Secondly, electricity. Thirdly, fuel. The rest of the things, my brother, you've done exceptionally well. And I don't think there is any party that should have done that. That's what they've told me. And how do I agree with them? I agree with them that because others failed to provide free education. I agree with them because others failed to pay civil servants their salaries at the council. The council workers. They were going into 15 months salary years. This was the time bomb the country was going to go for civil war. I agree with them because others failed to run the mine. So now, when people give me this feedback, I said, okay, so there are people who even reason the way you're reasoning that, yes, I was on the cover door three days ago. They were telling me that, my brother, I don't know how I can thank you. What is happening on the cover belt right now? We are excited, all of us. We never thought cover belt to get back again in mining. Luansha, Mopani, KCM. But if you can only resolve the issue of cost of living, the accounting, and I agree with them, cost of living, also fuel, and the load shedding, then we are done. Then I have asked for independent answers, because when you are in the, in the field, let's listen to the people, listen to what they're saying. Then I've asked them, that in your view, on load shedding, your president is saying the, ten, the only solution right now is solar. Do you agree with him? I said, yes, we do. And then the government has also told you that Zesco was messed up, it's highly indebted. Do you know that? Yes, we've heard that. Are you aware that a solution has been found to the debt by ensuring that Zesco partners with the private sector to start dismantling the debt? That yes, we are aware, which is very good. Now, those are things that cannot be done overnight, but the beauty is that they are being done. Do you know that the president is in China? Yes, I know. He's in China. I saw him when he was talking about solar. Yes. Is, is, are you feeling nice that he has succeeded in getting over 200 megawatts in one visit? He said, it's a good story for us, but when will that be? I said, look, they have to put up these equipments. They have to come by, by sea. And, and when they come using those vessels... They will not see that. They, they, they will not see that by 2026. No, what, what? No, what? no, 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 no. They will probably now, not see now, that by 2026. Now, now that, that is what you think. Well, now I'm, I know I'm it's a long-term no, project. No, solar, let me tell you, solar is not hydropower stations. Solar is bringing the equipment, you put them the same way you're connecting, and you connect, and then you take them on. That is why you've seen the 60 megawatts in the government. It has not taken many years or many months. In my research, a bit of it, yes, with the people, yes, is that if the cost of living was, was not this high, mm -hmm. they wouldn't mind if they didn't have power, honestly. Now, let, let, me, give, let me deal with something here. 
when we start getting to the cost of living, it is important for us to contextualize things by getting a relationship first between a drought and the, the cost of living. Before we look at other market forces, let me demonstrate. When there is a limited supply of food on the market, the price of food goes up. Now, the, 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 the science behind it is that the moment the, moment the supply of maize is limited, then the person who is selling maize will also increase the price of the other person who is selling carpenter will increase the price of carpenter. Because the demand for maize is high, therefore the price is high, he will also increase the price of carpenter so that he continues buying the maize at the new price. So those are what we call market forces. The one who is doing terrorism will also adjust. If it was 50 kwacha, I learned that that no. Because meaning everything has gone up. Minimum has gone up, and also this one has gone up. We have changed. We are no longer charging 50 kwacha, it's now 100 kwacha. That's what pushes is there, the cost of living. That is only part of the drought. There is a relationship. Why is there a relationship? The few citizens that produce in the Muchinga, Northern, whatever they produced, is being scrambled for by the whole population of this country. Leaving government with a huge deficit, prompting government to buy more. Remember that when FRI exported, what they remained it with is money. In other words, they remained with maize in monetary form, which money they have to use to import. Then part of the money, 1.6 billion was kwacha was released to clear the 258,000 farmers their money. What remained with it? They remained with it was for purchasing more maize, which maize now government can complement in purchasing and import more. Okay? So the point I'm trying to drive home, my brother, is that when you say, even if there is a lot shady, the cost of living must go down, we should also look at what is going on. What is going on here is that there are other factors raising the cost of living, such as fuel, such as the, 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 the power of your currency, which we've talked about almost every conversation that we've had. And how did we get to where we are? We were very sure that the idea to reverse the liquidation process was going to be done immediately, even if some people thought it was impossible. We were very sure that we would get so many investors quickly to get into the copper belt. So because copper production had gone down for a traditional export, affecting our currency, because we were not attracting enough for it. We only found that our colleagues were using short-term measures of looking for money using central bank and discharging it, which was not sustainable. So we had to find a lasting solution. We had, we had to ask, why are people not interested in coming to invest in Zambia? After finding out, we realized that most of them my brother, Zach, mm. we are actually scared of the debt. That we are not sure of Zambia's future economically. Because your debt is huge and there is no solution. The moment we succeeded in debt restructuring, they came. They said, even at household level, you cannot get your money, my brother, and give him Gombo who owes 50,000 and he has failed to pay. And then you tell him that, can you keep this money for me? Gombo will be a threat to you. That is how Zambia became. They could not trust us with their investment. They said, what if they change the police and grab their mind? Because these guys are hungry for money. That's how you saw that liquidation coming. Because they realized that the, the creditors, the owner of the money, were demanding for money, the government had run out of money. They said, let us just start pouncing on these mines. That seemed to be flouting mineral laws and all those things. Once we pounce on them, we grab, then we start running, we find a partner, we can find the money to pay the debt. That's what, that was their think. But then we have gone around to revamp the mining sector, meaning moving forward as a country, the country now should come back on track. Secondly, I want also to indicate that. Can you imagine what would have happened under the circumstances for thousands of youths that brought change if they were not recruited, as we promised them? The majority of the youths love your president, and he knows that it is the youth that removed PF. And that is why there has been more emphasis in thousands of recruitments. And they know deep down their heart, if they are playing among the friends of 10, they know that out of 10, three of their colleagues have been recruited. They know. If you ask out, you see them. At least a bus driver somewhere will tell you, my niece is a teacher and she was recruited. I met Chief Murino in Muchinga, who told me that my young man at Ndeka Hotel there, I only saw what I'm seeing now under one party state. 
for the first time, I have my own subjects in my chiefdom. I am seeing a soldier from my chiefdom. I'm seeing a teacher from my chiefdom. I'm seeing a nurse from my chiefdom. I'm seeing a police officer. I have never seen this after KK. Is that, is that, is that your now, basis? Is that your basis this, of uh, uh, your confidence that the UPN the is still is there. as popular the as, as it were 2021? The confidence is there because citizens voted for UPND to do exactly some of the things we are doing. And they are also aware that there is no president anywhere in the world who resolved problems of 10 years in three years. We should not think citizens in Zambia are ignorant. They know what they are doing. Even when, even the drought, they know how it has come. They are aware. If we think that the drought, the, the load shedding is a, is a UPND issue, then we should also agree that all the farmers that have been badly hit and the, 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 the opposition who are raising a concern of the drought and ruining hunger in parliament are lying about they are, they are telling lies there is no drought all the farmers are lying about hunger if we believe load shedding is a UPND issue or failure if we decide to believe that the issue of load shedding is a UPND issue and not the drought situation we should all agree that all those people that are claiming there is hunger are telling lies because the reason they are giving is that we had no rents government must come to our aid we should all agree here that all of them are just pretending they are lying. If we agree, it's probably lack of leadership. It's, it's probably lack of leadership. If we agree, if we because, agree, because because it was lack of leadership yeah. when your president was yeah. in opposition, he yeah. said that Lord Shedding was lack of leadership. I'll tell you, the, the, I'll tell you the difference. I'm not sure what has changed. Yeah, I'll tell you the difference. Zambia is experiencing the worst drought which has never been experienced before. Friends had an opportunity to to correct things. Okay. Without, what opportunities without, would you the, say they had? The opportunities they had at that time, my brother, mm -hmm. was that they were having they were having a load shedding even when the production for for, for Karibada was above 500 megawatts. As we are talking now, it's an issue of shutting down. They have never experienced this. Zambia has never experienced this drought, this kind of drought. The last time we had been near drought of this nature was around 1993 under, under when there was what they call in southern province you whatever that's where now distribution of maize food stuff started the, the, the nearest we came close was 1993 somewhere there but with this situation the difference is how government is responding how is government responding assuming this drought continues there is a vigorous investment now in the alternative source of energy because we have acknowledged that this hydropower station may fail us in future again. And how is there vigorous investment? We, have, we can now talk about, so far, the private sector, whom we have engaged, partnering with government, are able to talk about over, over 700 megawatts from the, from, from, the, from, the, from the private sector. Now, where is it going? Because we are talking about these figures, but the situation of road shedding is, is, is worsening. Where is this 700 going? Remember that mining, the mining sector had died. Mining global serious electricity. So what is happening there is that the miners and the small scale miners, they are saying we would rather have load shedding home than cutting off power. Government attempted to save the situation and said, can we give citizens who are crying? In Kawa, I'm sure you saw the protests from the small scale miners. They were all over protesting. They said, you cannot switch us off. Government said, look, thousands of and millions of citizens are affected. We want to save them. We'll also be cutting you off. There was a protest there. And there they agreed with government and said, we would rather have no power and allow the mines to run because then people lose jobs. The government had to reason with them and say, there is a point here. Can we continue supplying the mines so that we can have employment? People can have money at the end of the month and we can keep jobs. So now it is an issue of sustaining jobs also. When you sustain jobs, it's an economic issue. It means someone is going to have an income at the end of the month. Let me take yeah. phone calls now. Let me take phone calls. My guest is Max Mue, who is the United Party for National Development, UPND research consultant. And uh, we've obviously discussed uh, a lot of issues, obviously, are 
that have an effect on the cost of living and I think energy as well as agriculture. Uh, in the current situation of the drought, we thought we should uh, uh, discuss more on these things and of course uh, mitigation has been put in place. So let's uh, uh, take your phone calls now on 0955 Let's take this one. Good morning. Uh, good, morning you. good morning. Thank you for calling. Your name, sir, and where are you calling us from? Brother Namanda, thank you for calling. Please uh, make your uh, comment. Morning, uh, Brother Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Namanda. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Namanda. Let me take uh, another uh, call, but before that, I have a text message on Facebook. Kalanza Blessing says, You are just annoying us. Zambians have been ruled by seven administrations, and they have got experience. Uh, they've got experience to see which leadership is good for them when people vote, right? They actually, they vote for change. Well, when people vote, they vote for change, or they voted for change, I think it meant to be. When people voted, they voted for change. What change have you brought to them? That's the question. This, uh, the things they, that really matter to people uh, President uh, Hichilema has lamented, lamentably, lamentably failed to deliver our uh, one cost of living, uh, the cost of doing business, power crisis, high consumption, um, lack of uh, adequate water supply, uh, lack of money in circulation, regionalism, and uh, many others. Remember that there is always something that brings down any government, regardless of the excuses or small achievements uh, you can come up. Um, well, I thought you get, I thought you, you you will get something out of that. Uh, I hope you Correct, have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then uh, Vinjas Wale says, Sir, remember that one day uh, and very soon, UPND will actually be out of uh, of power. Ask your colleagues in in the PF who knew. 
that uh, one day they would actually lose power. So be careful uh, the way you defend your government and learn to appreciate where it's due, uh, where successful governments have uh, done or what successful governments have done. Um, uh, that is uh, Vinja, thank you very much uh, for, for that. Let me see if I can take uh, some more calls. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for calling. Uh, your name, sir, and where are you calling us from? Bomon Sanjay. Bomon Sanjay, please go uh, uh, go ahead and uh, have your say. Morning, uh, Mr. Monsanji. How was uh, uh, your place this morning? Oh. He's gone. Please yeah. call us back. Please call us back, uh, uh, Mr. Monsanje. Uh, let's speak another one. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Thank you very much for calling. Your name and where you're calling us from, sir. Moses from within Lusaka, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me give you one more uh, comment on Facebook, then I give you an opportunity to respond. Uh, Kampeshi Mando uh, Sitching to says, um, Professor Lumumba said, and correctly so, that uh, when people spend hours and hours of their precious time, if they have any, in, in, in inverted commas, explaining what they have done, just know that they have not, they have done absolutely nothing because good deeds speak for themselves. In the case of Max Mue, so this is yours, uh, it seemingly appears that uh, in any political dispensation, there is an incarnated in Tewewes. They were there in KK and the UNIP regime and in FTJ uh, regime in, uh, uh, and the MMD regime, except in Mwanawasa era. They temporarily disappeared, but uh, reappeared in Rupia, Bwezani, and the MMD regime. 
they were there in my culture of Yasata, King Cobra, and, uh, uh, and, and, and Eddie Galungu. Uh, they multiplied not small numbers, but too numerous to be counted, and they are back, meaning uh, you are being referred to them that, uh, that appeared in almost every regime, and they are back, and probably that means you uh, in this case. Okay. Um, my contribution, this is Joachim, I think it's my last text before you respond. Uh, Joachim K. Uh, Malila says, my contribution on energy, I remember when the nuclear power plant was actually first proposed or said in Zambia way back, we should have actually just erected the plant so that uh, in an event that there is a drought, no water for hydro uh, power generation, we should actually just switch to nuclear power plant. And in the event that we have too much water in the country uh, for hydro, we switch off the nuclear power plant and get back to, uh, to those. So those who feel it is dangerous, uh, economy is stagnant right now, uh, if we had a nuclear power plant in place, no one would have even, you know, uh, debated to switch on the nuclear power uh, plant. It's too long, but I guess that uh, you get the, the point that uh, this yeah. uh, gentleman is trying to. So let's let's hear your response. Let me respond. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Joachim. Nuclear power. That is the trajectory we have taken so far out of a nuclear, nuclear or thermal, perhaps thermal. We are now able to get something there. And uh, of course, the issues of nuclear power is something that is still on the pipeline because there are a lot of feasibility studies that have, been under, have to be undertaken because nuclear power comes with consequences. I thought they were. I thought the feasibility studies were taken. Since so you have read now, let me respond. That's what you said. Yeah. If you interject me, then I'll be responding to you and not to the callers. Now, so the feasibility studies have been done. You need to reallocate, I mean, to, 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 to employ a, res, a resettlement policy in a way. You need to relocate people. I'll give you an example of, um, of uh, uranium. It has radioactive rays. Imagine it is found very close to Chongwe. Then Chongwe town is dead. You have to remove people and relocate everybody somewhere else. People have spent money there. So you're going to do that at what cost? So there are all those things. And also equipment itself. So I think government has discussed that with other nations on another platform on the possibility of those things. So we wait for a formal position with regard to nuclear. But of course, alternative source of energy for the UPND government is the way to go. Shimando, Shimando, who quoted Lumumba, Patrice, who may have quoted on a number of uh, conversations, should also understand that uh, misquoting Lumumba cannot save the situation because there, then there will be no media. Do you know why you are talking? disseminating information is because the, part of the role of the media is to inform. So what we are doing is to inform. In informing, you have to explain. So if you are going to use a, a court, then you misdirect it to satisfy your ego. You're not helping the situation because you are basically fighting logic. What you are doing to, to qualify a point is to explain. So are we going to say that in your submission you failed because after giving the court, you misapply it, then you start explaining. So the platform is there for interaction to explain what government has done. My mother in Chiboria will not know what government is doing because maybe the person next door is telling them government has done nothing. And yet my mother knows that she's no longer paying for their child. My mother there knows that their, their, their child is now, my mother there knows very well that their, their child now has new allowances which are scrapped off. My mother knows there that she, being a marketeer, she's a beneficiary of market booster loans which has captured over 75,000 people across the country. My mother and my brother also know that out of all these people that are crying, those 2,800 cooperatives that have benefited from the grants will speak differently. They will tell you, we are seeing what we never saw before. Again, when you go to Indian, they will tell you, we are happy with what we voted for. It's making sense because now we have Indian back. We can get back our jobs. You go to Mufurila, Check those thousands that have been brought back. They will tell you this is what I voted for. Get the over 80,000 youths that have been recruited in government. They will tell you this is the change we voted for. So depending on where you stand, if you decide to be PF, you will not agree because for you, collecting levies illegally in the market was okay and you were benefiting that way. And you believe that was right. 
And we told you it is no longer right because the council can now collect money. And this is why the council is able to employ levy collectors. This is why we are not able to see in the paper the local government ministry advertising for jobs. Jobs which were lost because people were stealing as individuals and putting up properties that they cannot defend today. Some of them properties that they are even losing. The next point I want to bring out. Now, going, let me give you one other saying by one scholar, which says, great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events and small minds discuss people. End of quote. You start talking about in the way, way, what you move away from the debate. I want you to face me. I've produced activities in terms of discussion. I've given you statistics. I've given you what is being done. What I want to hear from you is to face me with a debate that you have not done this, you are lying. The, the, the true position is this. So now you can see how misdirected the court is. It was just caused to discuss persons, individuals, at the expense of national issues. And those are small minds or small brains that are being referred to in this court that I've given. The next point that I want to bring out, someone is talking about uh, to do more. I agree with you, Moses. And as you know that uh, we are resolving the mess of 10 years in a period of three years so far. Now, if we are at 80% and the things we are remaining with are only three, we should know what will happen once those are resolved. But there is, there, there, is, there is no message from our colleagues. Right now, they can't talk about free education because it's done and dusted. They cannot talk about my brother today about the mines. They are done and they tried to manipulate mines by crying far oh, no, this investor at Mopani went all over social media cheating citizens. It could not work. People are back for work. KCM, people are excited. They tried to bring in this and that. It cannot happen. It's done. As we are speaking today, as we are speaking today, my brother, we are glad. They said CDF will not manage an achievement. At least we can boast. Over 10,000 tests have been bought across the country for the first time after independence. Those that are making tests as Zambians, we are giving them an income that they never used to have. And because we know that carpenters may be few, we have embarked on a constituents-based program of training citizens in skills training, including carpentry, so that we can have the human resource that is responsive to what we are providing. The next point that I want to bring out is that you also have it's, it, this one talked about regionalism. Is it Kavanza? I don't know what he's talking about. Perhaps he's calling from abroad. You know that after KK, for the first time, and after Chiloba, we have the most balanced cabinet, which represents all the region. Go to go online and check permanent secretaries in your previous government. You are the situation where the entire situ, the entire parastato is mined by one region, and it's not the case. Go to state house, my brother. You'll be shocked. At State House there, you're going to find a llama. You're going to find a church there. At State House, you're going to find a kawonde there. You're going to find a chipoya there. At State House there, you're going to find um, Easterners there. you find Joseph, Joseph Lung as an advisor to the president to pro, pro, uh, project uh, police monitoring and implementation to check whether the party manifesto and the government policies are speaking to each other as his responsibility. Remember, I was chairing the manifesto committee, the manifesto and research committee, where I was mostly secretary there. Now, let me tell on you. That point, uh, on that point, if I had the way, I would not have read that part of regionalism, because uh, on this show, I had yeah. discussing regionalism. Uh, it's important I, that this has come up. If we can yeah. let it go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This and, and has come it's, to, it's important that we, we respond. Because if you leave it, there are certain things that, but, that but, but, but on this yeah. program, now, I, I refuse so, to discuss so, regionalism. So let, since you read so, it, let, let me, let, let, since you read it. I can let, ask let that me, you, let me leave you it ignore way. it and don't respond so, it in yeah, detail. So I will leave it this way. In ending on this call, Go to the recruitment the whole country. Today, people are smiling when they check the newspaper. They are seeing all the regions being, being recorded. So you must be fair to yourself. Now, these are irresponsible citizens that have no iota of unity in their mind. Can I go ahead and send so a few phone then, calls? Now? Yeah. So then the, the last one, yeah. um, which came from, um, it should be Vinja Siwale. Yes. Where he's saying, uh, one day UPN will be out of power. Be careful how we are defending the government. But again, I want to bring you back in the sky. Let us debate. Don't fail in a debate and start calling on wishful things. UPND has come. Yes, someday UPND will also go. And everybody is aware of that. Okay? But of course, we know also that it's not in 2026. Right now, there is no opposition. 
It's not your comfort. By, that's not the comfort. We know what we are doing. I've already told you that we have only about three things that are remaining to be done. The cost of living, the fuel, and road shading. We are done. Zach, I'll come back on this debate. That the opposition right now are done. They have no message. These are the three things they're talking about. So now, your president is also a tactician. He's a skinny. When you check how he's approaching load shading, watch the space. You will be surprised. When you check how he's approaching the agricultural sector by marking 17,000 farmers, from, it has never happened. Then he starts pumping irrigation equipment. Watch the space. You are yet to know the type of leader that you are dealing with. Let me then, take some lastly, calls, yeah. lastly, so when they say so be careful what 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 the other person says oh, there was this one there was the way well, that is not the yeah I think we, let's let's, let's take some more calls uh, good morning welcome to the program your name is and where are you calling us from John morning John come again oh, Leon Leon okay. oh okay okay. Please, please go ahead. Mine was just a consideration. Okay. Uh, looking at the environment uh, which are there, I just wanted to add on this. Maybe because uh, if you look at Mumadi Mitzvah, um, you go to Mills of Mines, you notice that Mamoto Kabambi, in a part of the majority of And uh, in every minute, you find not less than 10 vehicles that are back at Yanak. So I think government uh, repair those vehicles and give them to some of us use that still need to be empowered. Consider that my thing is that we just have to run on empowerment in that era time and that. So my last time that was planned. So from there on, the manga has a lot of people parking up. So that some of us also can benefit from this empowerment. Because we see them because they are just in such a particular area now. This is drama for this, but not for that one. There are many other things that we see for that. Thank, thank you. Thank okay. you, Leon, uh, for, for, for your contribution. Thank yes. you so much. Uh, we'll take another one on 0955 That's the number you're calling us on. Our guest this morning is Max Moore, who is the UPND research consultant. Uh, let's take this one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Your name's Sandra. Where are you calling us from? Come on again. Collins. Collins. Are you calling from within Osaka? Please go ahead. And learn from it, and please uh, do not just say we know. We, we know we are trying to do something, but listen carefully. Who are complaining? There are not of small minds or small brains. What? There are the most that are affected, especially the issue of electricity. All you see, is there anything that this government is doing apart from just waiting for the rain? Because even the three hours that we've been given, now we can't even see it. We can't see it. How do you honestly bring the electricity to zero one, zero four in each one? Eh? Sometimes, for what? For what sometimes? It's better that you just switch off everything when you just start waiting for the rain. Because unlike if you're, you're giving us the electricity from zero one, eh? from zero one to zero three, even if you think that even when it's so cold, you're even like when you were global. What is it for? Because I can't decide that to understand. What, why, why are you giving us the time that when you don't need it? When you don't need it. You're better off that the three hours, even at the time, it saves production, not to the light, no one, no need. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Collins, for coming. Uh, 
no, that this is Collins. Sorry. Earlier, I think we had Leon. Uh, okay. Yeah, Leon was the one begging for uh, government to give to empower them with vehicles that are that lying like, out of yeah. idle. Yeah, but let's let's take another one. Uh, good morning. Morning, uh, Mr. Proud. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Dr. Proud. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Proud, for calling. We appreciate uh, your contribution. Uh, would you like to respond? Let me quickly respond to this yeah. one. Yes. Uh, mm. Let me go direct and respond to the Collins. Yeah. Collins is saying, listen, government has listened to the complaints. Well, the job I'm playing here is to explain, because you are already saying, look at the, what you've been subjected to. Is their government doing apart from simply waiting for the rains? Now, because you have no answers, you have not taken time to listen to our colleagues. I'm telling you, from telling you that government has divided the approach into two phases. In two phases, one short term and long term. Short term, in markets, knowing that their brothers and sisters that are running tailoring equipment, they have brought industrial genesis. That's short term. In other words, it's not for a longer period. It's a short-term measure. Why you are waiting for these measures that I was talking about? On the other side, government is setting up alternative source of energy. So in answering you, we are not waiting for the rains alone. Okay, But it is important to mention that we are not going to abandon hydropower stations. Even developed countries like China, they have on the Yangtze River three gorges, which, five, which houses a 22,500 megawatts hydropower station. At the same time, in Xinjiang province, which is the biggest province in China, it's a desert. They have set up solar plants. Then they have also set up nuclear plants. They have also put in place a system of generating power using sewer 
refuse. That is what government is working on right now. I'm sure you heard one of the companies that, had, of course, was shown even on the national television, where they're talking about beginning to use sewer materials to produce electricity, which in technology we could not you know, explore. Now, those are long-term projects, long-term in the sense that they are going to protect this country in the future should we be confronted by a similar problem. So we, we, we are here to explain because people have raised concerns. But according you cannot have a conversation of complaints, then you will just go and close the program. Our job is to provide answers to the concerns that are coming from the people of Zambia. When answers are too much for you, don't take us back to the complaints as a conversation. Seek clarification if you are not able to get the answer. I think that's the point of the conversation. The next point that I want to bring out is, Leon, I, I, I sympathize with you because you, you believe, I'm glad that you know that there's empowerment going on, but because you believe some of you have not yet gotten this particular empowerment and your eyes are centered on government properties. I should also hasten to mention that the custodian of all government properties is the Minister of Finance. Okay? Now, government by law has a way of disposing of property. It is through an auction sale, giveaway, not dishing out to private subsidiaries. I know that there are certain powers that are enjoyed by sometimes the president to make certain decisions. But you do you need to understand, for government to dispose of that such things, the matter must go to parliament in the manner that you're asking for. Because taxpayers' money was released and it was passed by the National Assembly in the budget, that government is going to purchase 120 vehicles. There is accountability which is asked by the other arm of government, which is the National Assembly. We would like to know where those vehicles have gone. Have you given the people of Zambia? How were you given the people of Zambia? And which law did you use? So there are all these categories. But the minister is listening to the program. Government is also listening. They are taking your ideas and looking at, because the laws are made by human beings, and looking at possibilities of how certain things can be done differently. Laws are made by human beings. They can be changed by human beings. Your concern is very genuine. I like your point because you have the desire and you are seeing an opportunity, which some people may not see. And I also want to implore Zambians that the opportunities that are being seen in the area of agriculture, 17,000 earmarked people, we need to take advantage of that. Just like government has passed a policy, including the law on the Minerals Commission, a policy which allows that 20 if there is a contract of supplying things in the mines, uh -huh. which is below 25 million, it must be left for the people of Zambia. People in the Copper Belt, where I'm coming from, are excited about that because the majority of my brothers are there are into supplies. They are happy and say, no, now we can compete uh -huh. amongst ourselves. Previously, everything, 25 million, 15 million was going to foreigners. Now government has put in place a policy to help citizens. Uh, citizens on the copper belt must respond now because the market is open for them to compete amongst themselves. That is a progressive policy. So I must wind up by indicating on this particular score that government is paying attention to the people. From time to time, you've heard and, and, and people say all those things. I think someone, of course, was calling, calling for some ministers and saying they're competent. I think it's also important to point out specific ministers so that we don't uh, discuss all the ministers uh, who could be innocent holistically. You say, for example, this minister is incompetent, and you demonstrate in what area that minister failed. Because you should know that uh, ministers, whatever happens at ministerial level, is brought to the cabinet. Cabinet will agree. Then if it requires parliamentary approval, they will go, they will go to parliament. So whatever activities economically that are happening today have been approved by the opposition MPs in parliament. Whatever is not being done has no approval by parliament. Just like the budget on seeking 650,000 metric tons for DMMU had to go to parliament. So it is the opposition that approved it together with the ruling party MPs and independent MPs. So those things you are seeing being done as solutions have been debated by parliament, and parliament believes the solution is an alternative source of energy, and they have approved that. So we need to be guided that. We are not waiting for the rains, our callings. So you are waiting for us to listen to you, we have heard. So now listen to us, and what we are saying is that we are providing alternative source of energy other than hydropower station. 
Mr. Max Muir, we need to conclude, but I will ask that you make your concluding remarks as we come to it. In concluding, Zach, yeah. I must first of all remind citizens, the challenge is real. And all of us know that load shedding is a problem. Even the UPND affected. Even the people that are calling in support of government are also affected, they are indebtedness. Even those SMEs that you hear of, among them are UPND members, they are also affected. When you say they are affected because they cannot run their terroring machines, you should know that even children and sons, daughters, and everybody that comes from the ruling party are also affected. And because they are affected, it is for this reason that we have to be labor to explain what is it government is doing. This is a passing phase. We are going to face it. We are dealing with a, a government that is not pretending. They will tell you, if you are cutting off power, we are switching off Kariba Dam, it will be switched off. And if you believe load shedding should make a change in government, you should tell us what those people in the opposition are providing as a solution. I must end by indicating that there is absolutely no solution that they have to load shedding. The only solution you are hearing from now is coming from government. They are providing no alternative solution, nothing. It is zero out of ten. Even when you talk about change, be very careful. They have no solution, even to the cost of living. They are not providing anything. When they start waffling, it's about change and removing UPND. They have not provided any solution. When you go to UPND, it will explain to you what they have done and how they'll get out of this situation, as I have been explaining. I want to thank the callers that listened, including those that don't agree with us, knowing that one day they'll agree with us. But the beauty is that the majority listeners agree on the achievements we have made. And obviously, we also agree on the challenges that we have. And we agree that these are challenges that we've been confronted with. And this is what government is doing to ensure that these things are resolved. And I must indicate and remind them that this is a passing phase. Thank you. Maximo, I thought it was important that we have this conversation. And thank you that you came. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks go to 5FM that always provides a platform for dissenting views, so that through asking these questions, we provide answers, we knock them, because those are questions that are taken to the street. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when there are no answers, people believe in what people are spreading. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Well, listeners, thank you so much uh, to you too.